In this video, I want to talk about randomness and how to get a random number in C. So first things first, you have to include the stdlib library right, to get access to the rand function. So the rand function is called just like so with no arguments. And it returns back a random integer, right? So I can just print here, print f percent d, let's say backslash n, and just the random number. And if I run this, we get 41. Random enough, right? It seems like it's pretty random, nothing fancy here. Now, there's one pretty big problem with this random number. If I try, if I try to run this again, you'll notice that we still get 41. 41. And if I have, for example, multiple random numbers, I get these three numbers. And the first one is still 41. And if I run it again, well, you'll notice it again, just the same three numbers. Well, that's a big problem, if you ask me. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue is with the seed of that random number. When using a random number generator, for it to be somewhat predictable, it, it can keep the same results every single time you execute it, right? So uh, whenever it starts a new program, basically, um, the sequence of random numbers that it gives are always the same, unless we specify a proper seed. So to do so, we have to call the srand function. And the srand function here, takes an unsigned integer. And for example, as you can see here in the declaration, an unsigned int. And for example, if we try to give this function the seed of, let's say zero, in this case, why not? If we try to run this, you'll notice that we get three different numbers. And that's because we have changed the seed that was previously there. In fact, the, the call that happens before any rand function is as friend of one. If you try to run this with the seed of one, you'll notice that we get the same three numbers as if we didn't even have this function call, right? That's because that's the starting point. That's the seed that it gets initialized with. Now, how, how can we make this function Right, this program returns three different numbers, random numbers or pseudo random numbers, every time we execute the uh, program. So we don't want 40 or 41 every single time we execute, we want a different number. That's actually very simple. If we have the seed, if we can change the seed here, right, if I change it to three, we get different numbers. So what we have to do here is have this number be variable every single time you execute it. And what's variable every single time you execute it? Well, <laughs> funny enough, actually time is different. So if we take the seconds since the 1st of January, 1970, then you can actually have um, randomness or pseudo randomness every single time you execute it. To do so, it's actually very, very, very simple. All you have to do is first include the time.h time.h here. And instead of saying s and of three, what you want is, let's say, have a time t variable that says seconds from epoch. And that would be equal to the result from the function called time. And this time takes in a parameter and that's a pointer. And that pointer and that pointer really just tells the function to store the result inside the variable, but we can give it null so that we don't really need to store anything. So you just kind of, this function basically returns and saves it inside the pointer. So it returns the, the value itself and saves it inside the pointer, which is a, a, a bit redundant in my opinion, but still. So we have the seconds from Apple. Now, if I actually use this, here instead of three, 
for example, if I try to run this now, you'll notice that we get, well, 1804. That's nice. Now, if I try to run this again, well, we get different numbers every time. 1824. And you'll notice that they are kind of, they are decent. Like, um, maybe the first number is a bit uh, similar to, the, to, all, to all the previous iterations. But the second and third, they are very widely see, uh, widely different, right? So that solves our issue. Now, the only thing that might really be important is that this thing is usually a 64-bit uh, integer, and this accepts a 32-bit integer. So you might need to um, use a different type for this. But that's that's for another time. This already just works, and you can use it as is. In fact, you don't even need this variable, if you really want to, you can just copy and paste this and be done with it. Very, very, very simple, right? And that's about it. I just wanted to show you um, why you would be getting the same uh, random numbers every single time you execute it and how you can actually change that. This works for every single language. Uh, Java, C Sharp does that, Python does that. Every single language has a something like a random object or a random variable that also has a seed, and then you can actually generate random numbers using that uh, generator with that seed. Same thing here, right? Now, one more thing I want to clarify is why why do we actually need this seed? Can we have random numbers every single time? Not so much, because if you really are into computer science, you sometimes want your results to be consistent. So sometimes when testing, for example, it would be really, really, really helpful if every single random call would give a predictable result, right? So that you can actually test against it or something uh, similar to that, right? That is why you're allowed to set the seed for this one and it's not just defaulted to this simple call. All right, and that's about it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you understand why seeds are very important when dealing with random generators and well see you guys next time bye